If you've started tapering off of prednisone and you suddenly start feeling awful, what is it? Is it your disease coming back? Are you sick with an infection like COVID? Are you going through withdrawals? Or do you have adrenal insufficiency? Ah, so many options for all of the bad things that could be happening to you. In this video, I'm gonna go through what to look for for each, when to talk to your doctor, and then how to test for adrenal insufficiency if that's actually what you're dealing with. I'm Dr. Megan, the prednisone pharmacist. I'm here with the latest information from the Endocrine Society guideline for glucocorticoid-induced adrenal insufficiency. Say that 10 times fast. Basically, this is information that has been approved by the world's leading experts in this exact field. So in their guideline, they created a chart, and I want to go through this chart so that you can understand the difference between your disease coming back, the symptoms of adrenal insufficiency, and the symptoms of glucocoid withdrawal syndrome. Now, those are a lot of big terms, so I first wanted to define what those are. So first, your disease coming back. So whatever you take prednisone for, whether it's polymyalgia rheumatica, rheumatoid arthritis, asthma, or something else, it might have symptoms itself of your disease coming back. So for example, if you have asthma, suddenly you're having trouble breathing. If you have polymyalgia rheumatica, you might be suddenly getting achy, you might be getting joint or muscle pain, and it can be really hard to tell what is causing it. So if it's your disease itself, that's when it's extra tricky. But if your disease is like a rash and your symptoms are not a rash, then it's not likely to be your disease coming back, right? The second is glucocoid withdrawal syndrome. So the first word is glucocorticoid. That basically means prednisone or hydrocortisone, basically these steroids that are mimicking your body's naturally occurring hormone called cortisol, okay? So you normally make cortisol and there's three places in your body that work together to make it, two places in your brain, your hypothalamus and pituitary gland, and then one place on top of your kidney called your adrenal cortex. The three of them talk. And as time goes on, when you first start taking prednisone, they stop talking. You basically shot the messenger by taking prednisone. And then as you go down in dose, they slowly start talking again, really slowly, and every person's different. And in addition to that, your body gets used to having that really high dose of prednisone. And so just like if you were an alcoholic and you suddenly stopped drinking alcohol, you're going to go into withdrawals. If you are on addicted to pain meds and you suddenly stop taking them, you're going to go into withdrawals. It's not that you are addicted to prednisone. It's that your body is now dependent on prednisone. You can't actually make cortisol yourself anymore, not until you're getting way low. And so that loss, that drop... The feeling of that is glucocorticoid withdrawal syndrome, okay? And we're going to go into depth what it feels like. Then there's adrenal insufficiency. And that's essentially the way they're describing it in this is that it's when glucocorticoid withdrawal syndrome keeps going once you're at a dose of prednisone that matches what your cortisol normally would be. And that, they say, is somewhere between prednisone 4 milligrams to prednisone 6 milligrams. If you're taking any dose in that range, 4, 5, or 6 milligrams, and you're still feeling this awful feeling, at that point, it might be adrenal insufficiency. But anything above 6 milligrams, by their definition, has to be glucocoid withdrawal syndrome. So it has to be what they call supraphysiologic, above the amount of cortisol your body would be making. So now that you know the difference between the three, let's talk about how do you know which one it is? So the first are the symptoms. The symptoms of your disease coming back for someone with polymyalgia rheumatica is sudden joint pain, muscle pain. But guess what? The symptoms of adrenal insufficiency, what you can feel, include muscle and joint pain, general malaise. That means just you feel yucky, fatigue, nausea. Those are the big four symptoms of adrenal insufficiency. They sound a lot like the flu or COVID or just any infection at the beginning, right? The yucky joint ache, nausea feeling. That's pretty nonspecific. And then what about glucocoid withdrawal syndrome? What are the symptoms of that? 
actually general malaise, fatigue, nausea, muscle and joint pain. Oh wait, those are exactly the same as adrenal insufficiency. Uh, oh, but there's more. Sleep disturbances and mood changes. So if you're having those in addition to the first yucky feelings, it's less likely to be adrenal insufficiency and more likely to be glucocoid withdrawal syndrome. Sleep disturbances, mood changes. So what are the signs? Like what things can your doctor see? Test for your disease. It's disease-specific signs are appearing. Your joint starts swelling with rheumatoid arthritis. Your asthma, like they can do a breath test and see that you're not breathing as well. It's things that your doctor could test for your disease itself, right? For adrenal insufficiency, weight loss, low blood pressure, also known as hypotension, and orthostasis. That's basically when you like get up too fast and you kind of black out. That inability to have your blood pressure keep up with you going from sitting to standing or lying down to standing. So what about the timing? When is this most likely to occur? If it's your disease reappearing or getting worse or flaring, that can happen at any point, right? If you're tapering down and your disease suddenly starts flaring, that can ha happen at any point. When I was taking prednisone, I'd be dropping 60, 40, 20, 10, and I'd get my blood tested, and it would show that my disease flared, and I would cry, and I'd have to go back up again to 30 or something. It can happen at any point. When your disease flares, it flares, and there's no controlling it. It can just happen. With glucocord withdrawal syndrome, it can also happen at any point in a taper from 60, 40, 20, whatever your doctor prescribed, but it's not very common when you're taking 30 milligrams and above to experience glucocorid withdrawal syndrome. It's usually more likely when you're getting 15 milligrams and below that you're getting closer and closer to your physiologic dose, but you're not quite there yet. That's when you're most likely to experience withdrawal. They specifically said, usually when prednisone is decreased to less than 15 milligrams a day, and that you're at highest risk of glucocoid withdrawals when you've been on high dose, long-term, super physiologic glucocorticoid therapy. So when can it happen if it's adrenal insufficiency? This is what they say. Only when not treated with optimal glucocorticoid therapy, with subphysiologic glucocorticoid dose, increased glucocorticoid requirements due to sickness. What does that mean? Basically, you could only possibly experience adrenal insufficiency if you're not getting a high enough dose. So if you're somewhere between four to six milligrams, that's the only time it's possible. And if you're somehow below what your body requires, is the only time it could be adrenal insufficiency. And then that last part was talking about if you're sick, your body may need more steroids to deal with the sickness. I have a whole video about steroid sick protocol for steroids. You should check that out. But essentially, adrenal insufficiency is only likely to happen when you're below six milligrams, six milligrams or below. Okay, so can your doctor do blood tests to figure out the difference? Kind of. So if your doctor can do a blood test to detect if your disease has flared, awesome. A blood test for PMR would be an inflammation marker, such as ESR or CRP. Those are markers for many other inflammatory diseases. So that's a test some doctors can do for certain conditions people take prednisone for. And if there's something that's specific for your disease, they can test it. And then you know, oh, it's actually my disease coming back. It's not adrenal insufficiency. It's not withdrawals. What about withdrawal? Is there a test we can do, a blood test? So if your doctor tests your blood and you have withdrawal syndrome, your blood will probably look pretty normal. Your electrolytes will look normal. Your potassium, sodium will probably look normal. And it's possible you might have hyperglycemia, which is high blood sugar, but that's just a side effect of prednisone. That's not an indication that you have withdrawal syndrome. Whereas if you get tested with those exact same tests for adrenal insufficiency, and it shows low sodium, which is called hyponatremia, or hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, those are more likely to be associated with adrenal insufficiency. Now, can we test your adrenal axis? Can we test... Are the two places in your brain and on top of your kidney, are they actually talking yet? Is it happening? If you are taking more than six milligrams of prednisone, you are taking a super physiologic dose and there is no point in testing your HPA axis. 
There's no point in testing your cortisol. There's no point in testing anything related to your HPA, your adrenal system. The Endocrine Society specifically says testing is not recommended. If tested, ACTH and cortisol are usually undetectable. Essentially, you, by taking high doses of prednisone above six milligrams, you are turning off your body's ability to make cortisol to have these parts of your body communicate with each other. It's just not possible. And the testing, if you were to get it, just doesn't mean much. Basically, another way to say that is everyone taking prednisone over seven milligrams has adrenal impairment. Everyone. But if you're wanting to test for adrenal insufficiency, this is the new guideline that I'm thrilled that they finally came out with because this has been an incredibly controversial gray area that every single endocrinologist suggested something different. Some had this really fancy, super expensive test called the ACTH STEM test. And if you wanted to get ACTH as a therapy, it's like $50,000 a dose. So to get that test, it was going to cost you $50,000. Or there's the other ones with insulin tolerance, all of these different ways of kind of going about testing it, but not directly testing it. They were expensive, painful for the patient, and just not even that accurate. So new research came out showing that as your adrenal system recovers, you can test for early morning cortisol. They've discovered that early morning cortisol is a cheap, effective, simple method that reliably detects adrenal insufficiency in most people. Depending on the test you're using, the numbers are a little bit different. But basically, if your test is measured in nanomoles or NMOL per liter, if your test result shows something 150 nanomoles or less, then it's a high likelihood that you have adrenal insufficiency. The equivalent of that in micrograms per deciliter is five. So if you have five, that's a kind of funny looking Greek symbol, micrograms per deciliter. If it's five or less, it's likely that you have adrenal insufficiency. But you definitely got to be talking to your doctor about that. And then on the other end of the spectrum, if you get it tested with the first test and it says 300 nanomoles per liter or higher, it's extremely low likelihood that you have adrenal insufficiency. And in fact, that test is basically saying that you have an intact adrenal system. The equivalent is 10 micrograms per deciliter or higher. So then essentially the gray area, the part where we don't know the answer for you specifically yet is between five and 10 micrograms per deciliter or 150 and 300 nanomoles per liter. Somewhere in that range, it's not easy to determine whether that is adrenal insufficiency or glucocorid withdrawal, but we can say with pretty high confidence that above 300, above 10, you're safe. Below 150, below five, you're more likely to have adrenal insufficiency. But the timing really matters. And like I said, you have to be testing after you've already gotten below four to six milligrams of prednisone. Or the test is going to show low and you're going to be scared and it's not going to be true. So what about your risk for adrenal crisis? So as far as adrenal insufficiency, you have a risk for adrenal crisis if you're not on the optimal dose of prednisone or other glucocorticoids. Do you have a risk for adrenal crisis if you have glucocoid withdrawal syndrome? They say, unlikely if glucocorticoids are administered as patients with glucocoid withdrawal syndrome also have adrenal insufficiency. What an interesting way to put it. Essentially, everyone has adrenal insufficiency, seven milligrams and above. And so if you're taking seven milligrams and above, it's pretty hard to go into adrenal crisis. But that doesn't mean you're not going to feel perfectly fine. So now you know the difference between your disease coming back, glucocoid withdrawal syndrome, and adrenal insufficiency. Essentially, if it's seven milligrams in prednisone or above, and you're feeling yucky, joint pain, malaise, sleep disturbances, mood changes, it's probably glucocoid withdrawal syndrome. If you're on below seven milligrams, between four to six milligrams, it may be adrenal insufficiency, especially if you're not having the sleep or the mood changes, your blood pressure is low, your sodium is low, you're losing weight, 
and the cortisol test shows low. So what if you want to test your own cortisol? You fulfilled all of these requirements and you're like, I want to know, is it actually adrenal insufficiency? Well, that's a great question. The best option is to ask your doctor for him to order that test and to get it tested. The guideline recommends a blood test because they have the most evidence for that. But an easy, non-invasive way to do it is also a saliva test. So either way, it needs to be first thing in the morning. They call it an early morning cortisol for a reason. Definitely before nine o'clock. They say sometime between eight and nine o'clock is what they say in the guideline because most labs don't open until eight. And so they want you to get there, get the test immediately. But if you do a saliva test, you can do that at home. You just spit into a tube and mail it off. So either way is fine. And you can find out what your saliva or your blood shows and you can have your doctor order it. That's the best way. Or on my website, I have blood tests and saliva tests that you can order and show your doctor the results and be like, hey, I'm worried I have adrenal insufficiency and work closely with them to deal with the ramifications of that blood test. But if you're like, I have to wait six months to get in to see my doctor, I don't want to wait that long to get this answer, you can just do it really easily on my website. Just click the link below and you can find out exactly what your blood test is, what your cortisol level is, whether it is above 300 or 10, or it is below 150 or 5, depending on which test you're using. So just click the link below to go to my website. And I've also recommended a supplement to go along with that to help you in your recovery because not only is prednisone messing with your adrenal system, but it's also depleting other nutrients, making you feel awful. You already know that you're having blood sugar issues, you're having weight gain and other problems. And so you need nutrients to support your weight, your blood sugar. And then prednisone's causing that bone loss. And so you need nutrients to replenish what prednisone is stealing, leading to the bone loss. And so I recommend taking Neutronize Zone along with getting that blood test so you know exactly what your cortisol level is to find out if you're really in adrenal insufficiency or if you need to just wait a little bit longer. So take this along with your prednisone every day. You take two in the morning and two at bedtime to help you get restful sleep. It'll help you have healthy blood sugars and good metabolism, stable mood. It's exactly what you need to help you recover from taking prednisone. I've heard people tell me that it helps them to taper off prednisone. So just go to my website and you can get access to both the blood test and Neutronizone to help you recover from taking prednisone. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. Mm -hmm.